sitting down with senior ballistician Jaden Quinlan, and we're talking about our new patented drag variability reduction technology. Jaden, we've talked about how the diameter of the me plat to the diameter of the bullet diameter controls that drag variability. But how does this apply to all of the other bullet designs that we see out there? Yeah, great question. Um, in the in the early phases of research and development, we did a bunch of testing, not only with our own bullets, but also with many bullets available on the market from other manufacturers. And we saw that the trend followed uh, the performance in, in other aspects, in other bullet designs. You know, the places that you'll see the drag variability reduction technology implemented for Hornady is on tipped bullet designs, the, the heat shield tip um, bullets and the A-tip bullets. So what happens with, say, a bowtail hollow point or a lathe turn bullet? Mainly these bullets in the, in the long range shooting category, right? right? Because that's where drag variability really matters. Um, and we saw that, <laughs> interestingly, the, the concept of pointing a bullet nose, so with bowtail hollow points, it's been very common to use, say, a pointing die um, or for them to get very pointy. And that's very beneficial in an obvious way. It, it has a dramatic reduction on the bullet's drag especially at high supersonic flight. So this would be high velocity. Um, there is a trade-off though, as you, as you near the speed of sound um, or Mach 1, there's a, there's a negative trade-off of getting too pointy or too sharp. So we saw that there's a big benefit early on in the bullet's flight from a drag perspective, but it really hurt the drag variability. So the, the pointier that nose gets, especially when you go to like a lathe turn bullet that, that might be turned to like a needle point, those were some of the worst ones we, we've tested. For variability. Uh, that's right, yeah. Their, their raw drag is really impressive. It's, the, the BC numbers are really, really high at those high velocity, high supersonic numbers. But as you, as you look farther down range, as that bullet begins to, begins to travel farther and farther away and the time increases and the velocity uh, is, is slowing down, you see a trade-off. You see the drag actually starting to increase substantially. But that aside, from a variability perspective, specifically about drag variability reduction technology, the pointier those things got, the worse the drag variability got. So it, it kind of puts you in a, in a situation where it can be confusing because the drag is better. It's been lowered by making it pointy, but the variability is worse. So you can have a big improvement on BC, which we all want for sure. very obvious reasons. We want to lower the drag. However, if that high BC or that really low drag are inconsistent, you're just going to have high performance inconsistency. And so when it comes to long distance shooting, consistency is, is, can never be compromised. You it's have king. to have that shot to shot consistency to have success on target. And the further out you shoot, the more important that becomes. So in that time where we were doing all the research and development that, that ultimately resulted <clears throat> in the flat me plat shape with the ratio of the size of that to the bullet diameter, we also found out the things not to do. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll see drag variability exists in every bullet that's out there from a pistol bullet to 22 long rifle to 50 cal, everything in between. Every bullet has drag variability. But when it comes to long range style bullets, uh, those, those dimensions and shapes of that meat plat are very, very important, and they can play into whether you have good or bad drag variability. Thanks for explaining that, because it seems counterintuitive that a flat meat plat would actually decrease the variability, uh, because you, know, you think needle point sharp, and like you mentioned, although that does raise the BC values at high velocity, it makes them more variable, and nobody wants high performance variability. Nope, it's no fun. Chasing your tail. Well, for more information on drag variability reduction technology, check out episode number 127 of the Hornady podcast or our website, hornady.com.